Hey, hey, guys, how's it going? Happy Homebrew Weekly. Good to be back. Sorry about last week, but we're here and I've got myself a nice, fresh homebrew. Look at that. Look at all that carbonation there, eh? Cheers. Oh, hope you guys are doing well. And this week I have a, a little, um, i to make sure I've got my glasses and my mic going on here. Yep, we're all good. And um, we have a thing that's been going around a little bit on the homebrew community on YouTube. That's an FAQ. Um, and it's a tag thing where people tag you and you have to do, you know, the, the thing. So what this is, somebody, a, 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 a lady by the name of Tasting Niche. I've never seen her before, um, but she's a beer drinker and she does videos on YouTube. So Tasting Niche, I'll put her name down there. She started a little thing, which is a very smart idea on her part, I think, um, to get people to answer these nine questions. And so I took the actual questions from her video and I put them on here and I'm going to answer them. I was tagged. This is why I'm doing this. I was tagged by Tony Yates. Tony. Thank you. Awesome stuff. And uh, I was alerted by uh, American Bastardale. So um, ABA, Dan. So thanks, Dan. So there's 10 questions. Before I get to those, okay, before I get to those, um, I brewed this, uh, this uh, Brew Canada um, beer kit the other day, and it's a Canadian red, nothing big. But I was interested to, to note that underneath the lid when I opened it up, the yeast that came with it was a Nottingham, a Dan Star Nottingham yeast. Fresh, hard, everything, you know. I've never seen a beer kit come with that before. But unfortunately, I, I'm told that they're discontinuing these. So I'm going to have to go back to the Coopers and pay through the nose again, you know, for those things because the prices are going up. But we'll figure something else out. Anyway, so I found that very interesting. Do you guys, does any of you guys need any yeast? I don't, I don't need this stuff. It's this Cooper's yeast. Yeah, I use the yeast that I have been using for the past couple of months or longer, and it's going strong. And I don't know what number I'm on. I've lost count. A couple of guys wanted me to do an all grain on the 17th, um, go around with it. Um, Went through a little stress last week, had a doctor's appointment, had to worry, you know, everything, you know, but everything's fine. And I'm just, I'm just, I'm not sure I can do that because I've lost count. I think I'm on number 16 now, got this going back here. And I did an experiment. Um, I said I would do this and I did it. I was worried. I brewed a, one of these, these beer kits with that yeast that I've been talking about at 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh. There goes about 500 subscribers right there. <laughs> and the thumbs downs ought to, ought to be great. Well, that's all right. I wanted to see if that yeast would handle it. Uh, I've been brewing at 72 degrees Fahrenheit consistently with this yeast. Every single time, the same yeast. And I thought, what's going to happen if I bump it up, you know, 8 degrees? I'm curious. I used to brew beer back in an apartment many, many years ago when it was very hot in the summertime, didn't have any temper control, temperature control. The beer tasted like crap. And I don't know if that's why or with this poor sanitation, I'm not sure. Well, I will tell you, and this is the beer that was brewed at that temperature. I'm not advocating this. I do not suggest you try this at home. Okay, I'm not suggesting this. This is not a recommendation. Please don't think that I'm trying to push jacking up your temperatures with your beer. The only reason I did it is because this yeast has gotten used to 72 degrees Fahrenheit. And I thought, what happens if we bump it up? I kind of thought maybe some people from other parts of the world, like Australia, New Zealand, you know, where it's really, really hot in the summer. Um, when they, I've, I've heard they, they, you know, they, I can't brew any beer because it's too hot. Well, maybe if you harvest, you know, or, you know, use the same yeast over and over again through the springtime as the temperature slowly rises, maybe the yeast will just get used to it. Well, I have, I'm here to tell you, I'm here to tell you that 
that it's not bad. This beer was brewed at 80 degrees Fahrenheit. And with that yeast, don't do this with, you know, I'm, I'm telling you, don't do this with whatever yeast you normally use. This yeast is used to 72 Fahrenheit. So I jacked it up to 80 and it worked. I don't know if it's as good as the beer I normally make from these kits, but I'll tell you right now, and my son uh, drinks this beer too, no complaints. That's all I can tell you. No complaints at all. It does not taste bad. In fact, it's not bad at all. Don't, I don't want to go down as telling people, oh, because that's what's going to happen. Craig says, go ahead and brew beer at 80 degrees. No, it's not what I'm telling you. What I am telling you is maybe it's possible if you live in a climate where it gets really hot, throughout the spring, reuse your yeast over and over again. Maybe as time goes on and the temperature slowly rises, it will slowly get used to that. I'm not a technician or a yeast professional or, you know, whatever those, you know, but I'm just saying, okay, I don't want to spend any more time on that. Give it a try for yourself. Get a, get a thing, get a cheap old beer kit, do it, see what happens, okay? That's what I'm about. I like to try things myself, and there you go. All right, let's get on to these questions. Anyone needs any yeast, just let me know. Where's my glasses? Right here, okay. All right, so there's nine questions here. How did you get into beer? Number one. Well, my parents drank beer. Um all the way up since I was born. My, both, both my parents did. Um, my dad used to ask me, you know, he's sitting on the couch watching television. He said, you know, he'd say, you know, when I was a kid, he'd say, Craig, do you mind go getting me a beer? So I was a bit of a gopher, <laughs> I guess. And so I would go get him a beer and on the way into the living room, I would sneakily take a swig of the beer and go, eh. How do they, why are they drinking this stuff? It just tastes like poison. So I, and you know, I, that's, you know, the, my first experience. As far as getting into it, of course, you know, when I got a little older, 18, 19, you know, whatever, um, I started drinking beer. And when I was about 20, I noticed, you know, hey, the prices of beer are just outrageous where I live. So I started making my own beer. I do enjoy beer. I always have since I was a teenage, you know, an older teenager, and that's how I got into it. Okay, so I mean, I don't think that's a very hard question. Everyone got into beer. Everyone who's watching this video probably got into beer at some point. So, what's my favorite beer? Some of these questions are similar. So, um, my favorite beer that I've ever had, and I'll still say this until another one comes along, St. Peter's Winter Ale. And it's only available in the winter. I didn't have any this winter. I didn't get any. I don't know. I just didn't look around for it. I was lazy. But that's a really nice beer for me. That, to my, in my opinion, that's a nice sit by the fire, drinking a beer, listening to some great tunes, relaxing, you know, with a friend or a loved one. That's a good beer to do that with. St. Peter's Winter Ale. If you could have only one beer, what would it be? So that might, you might think, well, St. Peter's Winter Ale. Not necessarily. The St. Peter's Winter Ale is a, is a great treat, but I, I don't think I could handle drinking it all the time. All right. Um, all I can tell you is if I could only have one type of beer or one beer from now on, it would have to be an IPA. Um, because I love the hops and I love the way the hops make you feel. They're very relaxing. They help you sleep. Hops do have characteristics. And if you look, look it up, a lot of um, uh, um, health food stores carry sleep, sleep aids, sleeping, you know, natural sleeping uh, pills or whatever. And they have, amongst other things, they have hops in them. Hops help you relax, they make you tired, they make you drowsy, they help you sleep. So a hoppy beer for me is like a medicine. It gives you a nice buzz and it helps you go to sleep. So hoppy beers all the time, if, that, if I had to. How can you drink so much and stay healthy? 
Listen, I've just been to the doctor last week. I'm not actually that healthy. No, um, that's, that's not true. I am pretty healthy. Um, I have no problems. My blood pressure is fine. My weight's okay. I got a little bit of a beer belly. Um, I try to exercise and I try to eat properly. I don't eat shit food, usually. I don't go out to hamburger joints. I don't eat processed food a lot. I, you know, I do, everyone does it, you know, I could go on and on about this. Folks don't eat properly, period. And they sit down with these great big, huge plates of food and they, you know, and then they wonder why they're, you know, a hundred pounds overweight or whatever. So, um, but I'm not, I'm not completely healthy. I could do to lose a few pounds on, on the old stomach here. Absolutely. And, you know, I don't know. I don't think... I've probably got, you know, my liver's probably complaining. I got my my doctor warned me about that, so you know I have to watch. Um, guys, if you're gonna drink beer, just try to drink lots of water and eat properly. Eat salads, eat good foods, fruits, vegetables. Don't sit down in front of these bloody hamburger joints and have these great big, stupid, you know, once in a while. But that's how I do it. I'm not saying I'm totally healthy. But I'm not dying, and I do drink quite a bit of beer. So, here's a good one. Are you an alcoholic? Some people might say yes. Some other people might say no. I think I'm only an alcoholic on Friday night when I do my live broadcast. <laughs> but in all seriousness... I really don't know the answer to that question. Um, I guess it depends on your definition of it. And you, if you look it up, you know, online, you know, people say, well, you're an alcoholic if you, if you drink every weekend. Or you're an alcoholic if you have to have beers every day. Or you're an alcoholic if you wake up in the morning and you drink, and you drink all day. Or you're an alcoholic if you, when you can't drink, you're sad or you're, you're depressed. Like, you know, there's all these different definitions of it. I enjoy a couple of beers every day, usually, unless I'm sick or on some medication or something like that. Um, I don't walk around my house drunk, and I'm not pissed drunk when I go to bed, usually. The odd time, yes, but um, I don't know the answer to that question. That's all I can say, because there is no definitive answer to that. But. You know, I mean, some people, they on the weekends, they binge. They, they drink 50 beers on Saturday night or whatever. And the rest of the week, they don't touch anything. And they're considered an alcoholic. So what are you going to say? Okay? I'm, I'll admit to you, I do like to drink a few beers every day. Not a lot. Some days more, some days less. And I don't think it, you know, I don't think it's a bad thing. My family doesn't care. Everybody's happy here. I'm not a drunk. I don't walk around here, you know, tripping over stuff and staggering around. So, okay. Um, what's my favorite ingredient for beer? Well, Tasting Niche, when she answered this question, she said yeast. Okay, and not, not criticizing, not criticizing, but you need, you need yeast in beer. You have to have it. It, if it don't, if it's not there, it won't. It doesn't work. It doesn't brew unless you leave the top off and let it, you know, brew naturally. Um, so I, I don't, I don't think I'm gonna say that. I think I would say um, something that's, you know, normally in beer but not necessarily in high quantities. Hops. I love hoppy beers. You know, you have to have, you have to have malt. You have to have, you know, barley to make beer. So you can't say it's your favorite because if it's not there, it ain't beer, right? So, you know, you could put lots of things in beer. You could put hops in, you could put fruit, you could put, you know, different herbs, you know, lots of people put, you know, allspice and, you know, nutmeg or whatever, and pumpkin puree and stuff like that. So I'm looking at those types of ingredients when I talk about this. And for me, if I'm going to add anything to a beer and it's only the only thing I can add, hops. Okay, 
and lots of them. That's my favorite ingredient. Do you brew? Okay, <laughs> so I obviously um, tasting niche, you know, might not be a home brewer and that's a good question. So I added a part to that question. If so, what is your favorite method? I'm not going to get onto this beaten horse again. My favorite brewing method is the one that most suits the time I have, the money I have, and the needs of the pipeline. So whatever that is, that's my favorite method of brewing. It might be a can, right? It might be a partial extract or a mini mash. Right? Or it might be an all grain when I'm really free and have lots of time. That's my answer to that question. Mini mash is really the best one for me though. It's the best of both worlds, I think. But it does take some time. What was your first beer? I would say my first beer was a Labatt's 50. Um, because that's what my parents used to drink when I was growing up and it tasted disgusting as far as I was concerned, but not that long ago, I actually went and bought some just because I thought, you know, this is what my parents used to drink. I want to try some. Well, it's not a lager, it's an ale and turns out it's not a bad beer as far as I'm concerned for a, for a, you know, run of the mill beer. It's not too bad. Labatt's 50. If you can get it, give it a whirl. And Labatt's, you can contact me if you want. <laughs> All right. This is the last question that she asked. Who in the beer world do you look up to? You know, I've had, I did an interview with John Palmer. Um, he's a great guy. I do look up to him. He's very smart. He knows a lot of stuff. And, um, you know, it's good. It was good to talk to him. But I can't... Whoops, that's not going to work. I can't put my finger on it, really. I think that for me, um, I'll look up to anybody who has the right attitude about homebrewing. And that means that no snobbery, okay? I don't like the brew snobs because they're like one way or, the, you know, my way or the highway kind of thing. So that's not, I'm not a fan of that. Uh, anybody who is, you know, somebody who has like, you know, a really awesome brew setup, you know, and, you know, they've got all the pumps and things going on and they got their shit happening and their buttons and temperatures and, you know, they, and they do that in their garage. And then they can still take one of these, you know, on a Monday night and brew it up because they're running out of beer and they don't mind it. That, from, to me, there's a brewer and I look up to people like that because I'm like that. I don't have the big setup, but I think that somebody like that is good for the community and uh, it doesn't scare anybody away. Um, and that kind of an attitude, I give that a thumbs up. In fact, I'll give it to all the way. That's who I look up to. Okay. So there's nine. I need a little swig of this. All right. Now I lost my glass. There they are. Okay. Um, I'm trying not to edit this, hopefully. Okay. Oh. Who's this guy? Oh, he looks awfully serious. He's doing something very important there, isn't he? And he's wearing one of my shirts. His name is Jake. Put his name down at the bottom of the screen. I'm not sure how to pronounce his last name. So I'm just putting it at the bottom. And he sent me this picture. And uh, so I'll put it on the screen. And thanks, Jake, for supporting what we do here. Excuse me. Whoa. Burr. <laughs> All right, so thanks a lot. If you brought a shirt and you want me to um, 
put it on here, craigtubemail at gmail.com. craigtubemail at gmail.com. And yes, I am way behind on answering those emails. So if you'd sent me a message in there requesting, excuse me, well, you know what? When you drink beer, you burp. Um, if you sent me a message there requesting, a, you know, figure out how to send me some beers and stuff, rest assured, I will get back to you. That's one of my plans for this weekend, maybe even later today, is to get back to all that. I just, I was, you know, I got preoccupied last week with some stuff, so, and, and you know, the doctors and all that. You, you make, you know, the, the, you go to the doctors, you do some routine stuff, and then they call you and they want you to come back. It's like, shit. You know, what do I do? Like, you know, you start to worry. And I'm 51 years old, so I was a little bit preoccupied. I apologize, so I will get back to those emails, I promise. Okay, so five people that I'm tagging to do this frequently asked ask questions. And please feel free. I don't know the rules. I didn't make this up. That's tasting niches credit. But I'm going to tell you that if you want to add a tenth question or an extra couple of questions or slightly change the questions, I don't have a problem with that. But I will ask you to please post the original ten questions in your more info section. I'll put these in mine so that you can... That way everybody's got a chance to go from scratch and it's not going to be like playing telephone and it's going to end up a completely different thing um, as it goes along. So if you can just post those ten questions down in the thing... Um, and then if you're going to change it, you know, at least people know the original questions. Okay, please just do that. Out of respect for, for the originator of this tasting niche. Okay. Um, I was tagged by Tony Yates. Okay. Okay. So the five people that I'm tagging, I took about 10 people. I, I had a hard time deciding. So I kind of took a bunch of people, threw in a hat, you know, drew out five. And here's where I came up with, I'm sorry if I left out somebody. I, you know, I, I, I did it that way so that I didn't feel bad. Um, Steve James Barr. If you're watching this, okay, I want you to, to do this. He's an old buddy of mine and he's a faithful friend. So from, uh, from us, um, New Zealand. I, was, I almost said Australia. It's okay. I love both countries. Brett's Brewery. <laughs> He'll know what I mean. <laughs> Whoops. Brett's Brewery. Get on the can, bud. Let's do it. Rye Channel. Same thing. These guys are part of the IBM. I didn't get the other guys' names. I didn't pull those out of the, the thing. So, but if you guys, if all you guys from the IBM want to do this, I would please. I'll tag all of you, but I only got five here. Jeff Healy, he's a good guy. I like him. Let's go. Off you get. Get that camera rolling. He knows how to do it. And finally, but not last but not least, Jake from Jake and Dar. I want to see a video on YouTube of all these questions. From you okay so that is that my responsibility for this week has been fulfilled now I can relax oh look I'm actually double I didn't realize I had some wine left huh double fisted I'll let that sit there for later cheers oh the only other thing I have to say is I have a lot of fun on Friday nights on vonlive.tv slash craigtube. Um, I know a lot of you have come along and joined. Um, it's really just a radio show, basically. I mean, we play, I play music. I talk in between. There are some Skype calls that come in. Um, you don't have to chat in the chat room if you don't want. You can just sit back and listen. And I, if you do that, I would really appreciate it. Um, and I do, I sit there for eight hours and I put on the best, you know, cast that I can. 
And so even if you just check it out for a short while, it would, I'd really appreciate that. Um, and that's about it for me, I think. I hate goodbyes, but I have to go. So I don't want this video to be too long. Uh, thank you so much. Um, I think I've remembered everything. If you need any yeast, let me know. <laughs> and I will see you guys very soon next week, certainly on Homebrew Weekly and on Friday night this week, vonlive.tv slash craigtube. And of course, if you want to buy a shirt, just like Tony, Tony did, it's tgtshirts.com. Okay? Help me buy my ingredients for making beer. Thanks, guys. Cheers. Be safe. 17. I'll see you soon. Thank you.